The basic premise of the law in the United States is that it's colorblind. Critical race theory challenges that. Well, I've been teaching a seminar in critical race theory since the early 90s. But the truly extraordinary thing about the course this year is that we have brought into the seminar seven incredible people who have lived experience with the criminal punishment system, but who have become thought leaders and community leaders. This is a connection of the law with people who are the most heavily impacted. Joining us today is Tanya. Like we mentioned, she is actively involved in the movement to reform remission sentencing. Thank you for joining us today, Tanya. This is an amazing opportunity for justice-impacted individuals to work with the Columbia Law School students. And someone like myself who is justice-impacted with a federal conviction, it gives a lens that is rarely discussed. One of the unique components of this class is that we are working with seven consultants who are themselves formerly incarcerated individuals. These individuals are attending class and are working with our students who've been grouped into groups of three working on their podcasts. The promotion of the class is about the podcast. It's another way to talk about your work. I mean, they could write a paper and it's just me and Professor Thomas are gonna read it. This way, they're gonna be able to talk about critical race theory, whether it's dealing with black maternal health care, colorblindness in France. These individuals provide a really vital source of information for our students that they simply would not be able to access. We couldn't have known that the decision to invite seven formerly incarcerated people to collaborate with this year's student groups on the production of the Critical Race Theory podcast, CRT2, would be so transformative. We are teaching the students how to communicate conversationally with a public audience about what they're learning here in the Academy. My podcast is tackling the crisis around recidivism in relation to the criminal justice system. And we are talking about theater as a ritual for reentry. When we talk about people who are involved with the criminal legal system and we're sitting right next to them while having these discussions, I think this experience is amazing. Classes like this are important specifically because CRT has been politicized and there's a lot of miscommunication about it. Quote, indoctrinating students with critical race theory. Freak out over critical race theory. Critical race theory is a body of scholarship that originated in U.S. law schools that tried to make sense of the puzzling persistence of racial inequality and of relations of racial domination and disadvantage after legalized Jim Crow had been dismantled. Well, let me give you an example. Florida, a few years ago, through popular referendum, decided that they no longer wanted to have a democracy in which people who had served time in prison were denied the right to vote. We call this in the law felon disenfranchisement. For the first time, critical battleground Florida, with more than a million potential new voters, convicted felons. The Florida legislature comes along and subverts the will of the people of Florida by denying the right to vote to persons who haven't paid fines or penalties in connection with offenses of which they have been convicted or to which they have pled guilty. One of the misconceptions of white collar is that people are seeking restitution reform to not pay their debt, but that's not true. There are some of us, quite a bit of us, who've never received the money, but yet we're stuck with a lifelong sentence of restitution for monies we've never received. 
there's nothing about the original referendum or about the legislation enacted by the Florida legislature that expressly mentions race. But everyone knows because the history of felon disenfranchisement is inseparable from the history of the disenfranchisement of black people, that these race neutral policies, as we call them in the law, are very much about race. I say 2.3 million people are incarcerated in the United States. That's a number to most people. It's a massive number, but I think it's sometimes hard to wrap your head around what that actually is and what that feels like until you speak to somebody who was part of that number. I'm formerly incarcerated. And I, although I've, I've published and written books about being incarcerated, they have a perspective from the bottom. One of the things that uh, this class found easy to talk about is to not think about race as a noun, but think of race as a verb. And so when we think of the law, we think of law as a tool, a tool that is used either to advance, further maintain, contain, perpetuate ideas. It's definitely exciting to get to learn from people who are actually in the positions that we're studying. To me, it makes me have to think differently about how I, as somebody who wants to be a public defender, how I want to approach my clients. I think the biggest thing that drew me to the class is I actually came from a very uh, hyper-religious and conservative background. There were frequently conversations about critical race theory, so I really wanted to be able to have like a theoretical grounding to have those conversations with people who are in my family and who I grew up around, and I thought the class was particularly a great way to do that. Throughout the entire experience, I felt very challenged in my thoughts and challenged to refine my thinking and interrogate my understanding of how the world worked and how the law worked uh, in really meaningful ways. We're uniquely positioned to participate in this. We have a pretty broad justice and education, justice and community programming throughout the university. I think that there's an opportunity here to not just connect with the, the university, but to connect with the community. I've gotten a world of experience out of this experience. There's hope and justice. And I believe through this class, that's what I've received.